welcome back to my channel. I'm James. Today we're going to be reviewing and deep diving into the 1955 classic film Rebel Without a Cause. And this is a James Dean starring vehicle of a film here. And it's really one of those great classic films that's actually in the top 100 AFI films of all time. It is that great of a film. Now this is the brand new 4K Ultra HD release from Warner Brothers that has a new 4K restoration done for it. And I did get this in a full week early for review for me to dive into this, do all of my exclusive testing data and share all of that with all of you. I'm also gonna do my exclusive 4K versus the original 2013 Blu-ray image comparisons. That's something I always exclusively do here on my YouTube channel. And then at the end, as always, I wrap it up with my sum up total review score to let you know the quality of this set and if it's worth buying and adding to your collection. Now to start off with here, I'm gonna show you the 2013 Blu-ray above. Now, these are always the native images pulled directly from the disc. That means without all of the artificial things your TV can do to try to change or alter them. The native images are always what make the biggest difference when we're viewing these discs. Now, on the 2013 Blu-ray, it had several issues with the colors. They would fluctuate between like their skin going from like an orange color to a more natural color. And then like their clothing would fluctuate in colors. Now there was things that were very nice on the Blu-ray. I will say it did have some nice film grain you could see though, the film grain was very unstable, fluctuations, flickering, and very strong instabilities in the film grain. So there was numerous things that needed to be fixed that needed a 4K restoration. Now for the new 4K Ultra HD from Warner Brothers, this is a brand new 4K restoration, but I'm gonna be specific with my words here. This was created from a 4K scan of the original camera negatives. Now, if you noticed, I didn't say a new 4K scan of the original camera negatives. Warner Brothers was very, very specific about their information on how this restoration came about. So my understanding is, is this is using the previous scan that they had available, just doing the restoration off of that with new color grading and going in and doing new audio mix for it, obviously with the Dolby Atmos that's on this, which I'll touch on here in just a little bit. But then on top of that, they did a lot of restoration work on this. And that's really apparent from the opening scenes all the way to the end. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Just like with this video, I release a ton of this exclusive content that you're only ever going to find to watch here on my YouTube channel. So you never want to miss out on any of this exclusive or early content. Just like this review, this will be coming out several days before the release date because I got this in early for review to do all this testing for all of you. So make sure to go down there, give this video a like and a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now for this new 4K release, it is a native 4K 2160p. And like I referenced, this was created from a 4K scan of the original camera negatives. Now this does get HDR10 on it as well. I can tell you the HDR10 is a massive improvement in colors, obviously because of the wider color gamut, also because of the lights to darks, really enhanced the overall look of this film versus the previous Blu-ray. Now, some of the things I talked about on the previous Blu-ray that were issues with film grain and things like that, I can tell you for this release, unlike with Cool Hand Luke. Now, if you haven't checked out my Cool Hand Luke review or Maltese Falcon, you'll wanna go check out those reviews after you get done watching this video. But I talked about the issues that was on that Cool Hand Luke one and some slight things that were done incorrectly on that. Well, I am happy to report they did not do any of that on this release. For this, the film grain is very stable. It's very filmic throughout it. All of those instabilities that were present on the Blu-ray with the flickering, fluctuations, and instabilities are gone on this new 4K release. Though I am happy to report that going through this, because that film grain is very stable, you can see it throughout the entire thing, there wasn't any noticeable presence of DNR or any of the program meat that I've explained before of film grain reduction or film grain removal. It's just very nicely filmic and stable throughout the entire runtime of this film, which makes this look so much better than the previous Blu-ray did in just that aspect alone. 
Now the other big things are about the color grading on this. It does look drastically better because of HDR 10's improvement of the lights to darks and obviously having more color range than the previous Blu-ray did. You notice so many more things like Natalie Wood's lipstick towards the beginning of the film when she's sitting in the police station and man, you can see that lipstick but you can see that there's slightly different shades as it goes towards the top of her lips versus the bottom. Where on the previous Blu-ray, it was all just one like flat color red. You can actually see depth in her lips and some wrinkles in her lips and depth in that lipstick. The same thing goes for the ladies dresses throughout this film. Man, there's so many great colors having been from this film from 1955 in the time period itself. They have so many vibrant colors in their dresses and outfits and the breaths in their hairs and things like that. They shine through so much better on this and look drastically better on this new 4K release than they ever did on the previous Blu-ray release. So that was a nice improvement that Warner Brothers did for this release that makes this worthwhile in that sense as well. Now, if after you get done watching this review and hearing my review score at the end and you decide you want to buy Rebel Without a Cause on 4K Ultra HD, as always, I put the direct links from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section right below every single video. Those links are important because they never cost you a penny extra when you click on them. They're on sale for the same price through those links as everywhere. But those links do help to support the creation of these videos, just a tiny bit. So make sure if you decide you want to buy Rebel Without a Cause on 4K, make sure to click on those links I've posted down below. Those do help out the creation of these videos. Now, before I get into some more of my testing data, I wanted to share some of the history of this film and some of the tragic history. The three main leads from this film, James Dean, Natalie Wood, and Saul Maneo, all died after filming this film at various times in their lives. Now, the tragic one that happened before this film was ever released in theaters was James Dean. He died at the young age of 24 in a car accident. Before this film ever aired in theaters, he had died in a tragic car accident. And then Sal Maneo, at the young age of 37, was murdered outside his apartment in California. And then adding to the tragedy, Natalie Wood drowned swimming in the waters off of Catalina Island at the age of 43. So the three main leads in this film all had tragic ends and it is one of those things that I kind of think makes this film even more of a unique film. It kind of lends to the pieces of where James Dean is racing his car in this film and different things like that that kind of were foretelling things that happened to him. And that's where I think that this is one of those films that everybody really needs to experience. Now for me, myself, I love the film because of the time period it's set in. The story of rebellion, teenage rebellion, and the consequences, and a lot of people are not aware of this, but this actual film is based on a book that's based on the true story of James Dean's character that he's playing in the film. So it has a lot of history behind this film that a lot of people just aren't aware of, and it is really one of those films that when you sit back and watch it, the acting in it's great, the direction in it's great, and I really feel like it is one of those pieces that really did deserve to be in the top 100 films of all time that everybody needs to watch and experience. Now one more little bit of hidden tidbit history on this that I wanted to share is, is James Dean as an actor was so intense in the role in this film that he actually got drunk when he was playing the drunk character towards the beginning and throughout the film. When he's pounding his fist on the desk at the police station, that was real and he did it so hard that he broke all the bones in his hand. That's how intense he went into the role in this film. Now throughout the film, he was injured numerous times while filming because he was actually getting into the real fights because this film for the time period is violent for the time period. And it was considered a shockingly violent film for 1955. Now I think it holds up extremely well today and it's not over the top, but you can see the realism behind it because he actually got injured in those fights because they were real. On top of that, he broke his hand numerous times filming numerous scenes. Now, if you wanna check out another James Dean classic film that I really enjoyed, I did the previous review of Giant here on this YouTube channel. It's available right now. You can dive into and check out this video after you get done watching this one. This was another very interesting 4K Ultra HD release of a classic film. If you haven't checked out this one or watched my review, you're gonna wanna go watch that after you get done watching this review. But this is another great James Dean film. Though I do say I really like Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor in this. They're the ones that really shine in this. James Dean is kind of more a secondary character. 
But otherwise, this is another classic film you're gonna wanna go check out after you get done watching this review. Now, touching on the audio on this, this does get a brand new English Dolby Atmos mix, as well as an English Dolby True HD 7.1. I can tell you the Dolby Atmos on this was a fun audio mix. I really appreciated Warner Brothers going the extra mile to do a Dolby Atmos mix for this. Now, this does also get a DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 lossless original theatrical mix. Now, there's some debate because there's different versions of the theatrical mix. They had two different ones that were aired during the time when this ran in theaters originally, but According to the release from Warner Brothers, the original 2.0 is the one that's included in this, and that is available. Though I will say, the Dolby Atmos was a fun mix. Now, it wasn't the most sonically active moving things around where I felt like it was one of those reference quality Dolby Atmos. It's not. It's just kind of got some cute little things that'll make you smile how they implemented the Dolby Atmos and used different effects in it. And it is very clear. It's a very clean audio mix. You can hear it extremely well. And for a film from 1955, I personally think this might be the earliest film I've ever seen released on 4K that has a Dolby Atmos mix implemented for it. So for that reason alone, I applaud Warner Brothers for going the extra mile and including it in this because it is a cool addition and I did really enjoy it. No, it's not the best I've ever heard of Dolby Atmos mixes, but the fact that they took the extra time and it is such a good sounding mix, man. I really liked it and thought it was a nice upgrade, especially over the previous Blu-ray. A lot of the issues like I've talked about before in some of these older films, there was some slight hisses and clicks on that, on that audio mix, they're gone on this. And the Dolby Atmos sounded very nice. And the Atmos was my preferred way to listen to this film. I did enjoy it more so than the other audio mixes in this because it did add, like I said, a little things that'll make you smile and added to my enjoyment of the film, which is what I'm always looking for. When I buy these and I test these out or I get these in for review and I do all of these for all of you, what kind of an upgrade was it? Was it worthwhile? And in that sense for me, the Dolby Atmos was a worthwhile upgrade over the previous Blu-ray which made this a more valuable upgrade. Now, talking about the image here now, there was some slight things I do wanna point out. There was some slight artifacting and digital noise present in this. Now, compared to the previous Blu-ray, the Blu-ray had several things where there were so many instabilities, fluctuations, and things like that in the film grain. It would have been harder to notice a lot of those because of all those instabilities. Because the film grain is very stable throughout this in filmic, that is why that is a slightly more noticeable thing. There is some slight digital noise and slight artifacting. It is not horrible. It is very brief in only a few instances throughout the film. It does not run through the whole thing, but you'll understand a little bit more how it rates overall quality of audio and image when I get to my review score here at the end. Now, showing you what you get in this, I really like these 100th anniversary slip covers that Warner Brothers is doing. I love how it has the logo up here and it's shiny gold. I really like this cover artwork they did. Slipcover says Rebel Without a Cause on the side. Then on the back, it talks about it. Now you do get your digital copy for your movie code from Movies Anywhere, but that's minus all the special features and I'll explain why that is when I get to the inside here. Now, when you get inside here, you get your Blu-ray disc and you get your 4K Ultra HD. 4K Ultra HD is 100% region free. Talking about your Blu-ray though, this is the original transfer from 2013 that I'm showing you up above. They did not, even for this release, just like I talked about in Cool Hand Luke and Maltese Falcon, they did not put the new restoration onto Blu-ray and include it in this. This is the original old transfer from 2013, nothing new on it, included with all of the original special features on that Blu-ray disc. This though is the brand new 4K restoration all included only on the 4K Ultra HD disc. Now, getting to some more of my exclusive testing, I dived into this and did the rough average bitrate. And I'm happy to report this had a very strong and very healthy rough average bitrate of 76 megabits per second. I was very surprised at how high and healthy of a rough average bitrate this had. And that lends to why I said the film and image was so stable and filmic throughout with only those slight nitpicks that I was pointing out earlier. Now, getting to my review score for Rebel Without a Cause on 4K Ultra HD, this gets an excellent 9.3. It is a must buy that you need to buy and add to your collection. This is one of those classic films that every single person needs to watch and experience 
And now that it's on 4K with this restoration they did, this is the best way to experience this film ever on home video. It is a great job by Warner Brothers. They didn't do any of those grain reduction, grain removal, any of the program neat. They didn't take it out of this and make this so that it looked waxy or soft. It has a very nice and filmic image throughout it. Though keep in mind with how this was filmed, when you get to the edges of the film, and you notice that it kind of has more of a fish lens almost look to it on those edges or it's softer towards those edges. That's the cameras and things that were used at the time period. That's not something wrong. That's not something that's ever going to go away. That's in the original film elements. This is the best way to view Rebel Without a Cause on home video ever. It is a great release. Excellent job by Warner Brothers. I really enjoyed the Dolby Atmos and I highly recommend this release. Don't wait to order your copy. Support releases like this from Warner Brothers. Show them that we appreciate the work they did on this, just like what they did on the Maltese Falcon. Buy your copy, add it to your collection, and enjoy this in the best home video viewing experience that this film has ever had. And let me know what your thoughts are on the Atmos. Did you enjoy the little touches and the little things that made you smile? How excited were you for this release? Was it one you were thrilled to add to your collection? Make sure to start that conversation in the comment section below. As always, I put a ton of extra time and hard work into all of these exclusive comparison reviews. If you enjoy and appreciate all of this time and hard work that I put into these, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club or give a super thanks to the super thanks button right below. Every single one of these videos can only be created through all of you, my viewers and subscribers support. I'm not sponsored and I'm not paid by anybody. The only way I can always continue to create every single one of these videos is through you, my viewers support. I want to say a huge shout out and thank you to every one of my VIP club members. Without all of your support, I couldn't continually do this. And it's very important to not wait for somebody else to support the channel. Go out there and join my collector's VIP club. It only costs you a couple of bucks every month. That goes straight back into the continued creation of every single one of these videos. If you decide you're going to buy this release now on 4K Ultra HD, don't forget to use the links I've posted in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. They never cost you a penny extra and they're on sale for the same prices everywhere through those links. But those do help to support this YouTube channel just a tiny, tiny bit. So even that little bit of support really helps out as well. Every single little bit, you don't understand how much every single little bit really helps out. I truly hope all of you had a fun day today and I hope you have a blessed day and I've always got something new, exciting, and early coming out very soon.